Welcome to the Almighty God and Gospel Girl podcast. Each week, you'll hear testimonies that turned failures into hope, despair into inspiration, and darkness into light, as well as actionable tips and strategies that you can implement in your daily life to overcome obstacles that can detour our Christian walk. Galatians 6.2 tells us to carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now here's your host, the Gospel Girl, Tammy Becker. Sharing the gospel is one of our most important callings as a follower of Jesus. It should be our vision to see others enter an authentic, life-changing relationship with Jesus. Hi, everyone. I'm Tammy Becker, and welcome to the Almighty God and Gospel Girl podcast. And today we're heading into a brand new series titled, What Would Jesus Do? Now, this season is season seven, and podcast today is just episode one. So today's podcast is titled The Origin of the Phrase, What Would Jesus Do? And each week I plan on deep diving into some topics that might not be very comfortable to many of us, but nevertheless need to ask with the beginning phrase of, what would Jesus do? So I want to start off with a little disclaimer to please get into your Bibles and research things for yourself and let God discern his word to you. Don't take my word for it. You know, let God talk to you about his word because I do research, but it doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes because I'm transparent and I'm telling you I make mistakes. God tells me that all the time. So. In Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 24, it says this, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. At his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. Poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades, in torment. He lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in this flame. Again, if you want to read that, that's in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 24. And some of you might have read that before, but we wanted to stop, start, and stop there as we get diving into our story because I want you to think about that and what the man is thinking about the rich man down in Hades being tormented in the flames and crying out for mercy and wanting that mercy of just a finger of water to cool his tongue. He was miserable. And folk, this is what I'm talking about. After we die, we do have eternal life. But where we spend eternal life is up to you and what you do when you're in this earthly body and here on earth. It is you have the choice. Now, some of you might be familiar with the phrase, what would Jesus do? Because of the abbreviation WWJD is often seen and it's recognizable on colored bracelets and shirts and bumper stickers. And so back like in 
I think it was really popular in youth groups around 1990 and in the early 2000s. So the brief history, in case you haven't heard of WWJD, when I examined the origin, it was popularized by Reverend Carl Shel- Sheldon. And he has a lot of books out. He has multiple books out in a variety of background that he used this expression in connection with scripture. And a, and a little history on the Reverend Charles Sheldon is he, is he had this best selling book that certainly made a mark on Christianity. And the book was entitled, and I'm not, you know, I'm not telling you to go out and buy the book. I'm just telling you the rep, the research I did. And it was entitled In His Steps. And it's what would Jesus do? So readers were encouraged to consider that very question in every situation. What would Jesus do? And it was based on a few sermons he delivered in his congregational church that he pastored in Kansas back in 1996. So then if you if you did a little further research, you'll find that about hundred years later, Sheldon's book inspired another modern Christian youth, Jamie Finkelberg, to use the phrase to encourage modern Christians to live just as Jesus did. So now we say hundred years later, a revival of this book and question as Christians frequently posed, question that Finkelberg adopted, that contemporary phrase WWJD, for what would Jesus do? for the young people in our youth group in Michigan. So Tinkleberg's youth group also created those cloth bracelets that maybe you've seen and maybe you haven't. And then they began wearing those bracelets that had that WWJD on them and other accessories that many of the teens and young people who wore them so they could intentionally consider what Jesus would do in their own life in situations during their everyday moments and walk of life. I think this is really fascinating. So what I really want to talk about is, does this phrase have a biblical origin? Well, if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, we do see that Paul encourages the Corinthian Christians to imitate him just as he tried to imitate Jesus. So we do see there are Bible verses that mention imitating Christ as following his example. And then over in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, it's another epistle, and the apostle also encouraged believers to imitate God. Therefore, in everything you do because you are his dear children. And once again, in Mark chapter 10, verse 44, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, we're told believers are to cultivate a servant attitude that reflects the mindset of Christ who came as a servant to give his life as a, as a, as a ransom for many. So in many in terms of like discipleship, Jesus repeatedly emphasized the need to follow him. And he also told the 12 disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must do away with themselves and take up the cross daily and follow me. And you can find that in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. So following Christ is much more than trying to be a good person. Disciple, regu- you know, disciples regularly die to himself and lay aside his desires and plans in favor of following Jesus. So this means a disciple is willing to suffer for Jesus' sake, even at a great cost to themselves. And however, there is no real biblical verse specifically commanding believers to ask the question, what would Jesus do? So therefore, scripture has inspired the phrase WWJD just not in a direct way. In this parable, I read from the Bible at the beginning of the podcast, Jesus challenged his listeners to that same question. He does so through these two characters, the rich man and Lazarus. It seems the rich man had it all in his worldly life, 
fine clothes, warm food, servants to care for him, and a lovely home. On the other hand, Lazarus suffered tremendously. He was homeless. He was covered in sores. He was starving. Now, clearly, Lazarus was a man to pity here on earth. When, ironically, the tables turn in the eternal realm, we see Lazarus by Abraham's side enjoying the good life of heaven. And now the rich man, the rich man is in Hades for eternity. That's forever, folks. Eternity's forever. Remember, we go two places. <laughs> it's up to you where you go. He's being tormented. And he cries out to Abraham and Lazarus in misery, wanting them to minister to him. This one verse has haunted me for years and years that that cry. If ever you thought about a loved one or not sharing the gospel with anyone and them spending etern eternity in torment and Hades and hell, eternity, this is forever, ever, and ever. Rather than eternal bliss with our Father, them being in torment. Here is a man telling us how horrible it is and was, and he was asking for them to minister to him. He was crying out, this is the verse you take to the people to and try to get them to understand how horrible it will be to spend eternity in the other place rather than with the Father. It makes you wonder what we're doing here on earth, what your purpose is, what you're making most important in your life. Is it God? Is it your purpose? Or is it having the perfect house, having the perfect occupation, having the most things that you can't take with you in eternity? What is most important? If you've ever wondered if heaven and hell are real, Jesus clearly answers your question here. And if you ever wondered if your actions here on earth are going to inform where you will spend eternity, Jesus again answers that question as well. Salvation of your soul is going to come from the transformation of your character in your life and your character to be modeled after what Jesus would do. And it should be modeling your life like Jesus. And maybe we should all get those bracelets with WWJD on them. So following Christ means, and it involves obeying his commandments, which can include telling the gospel and making disciples of all nations, as it's told in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. And following Christ involves becoming more like him and obeying what he says to do asking what Jesus would do in a situation and reflecting in the verse that mentions imitating and following Christ in the Bible and definitely encouraging us believers to model Christ-like behavior in the everyday life that we lead. However, no Bible verse specifically commands believers to ask the question, what would Jesus do? So influenced by many people and sources and movements, there's not really one direct origin of the phrase, what would Jesus do? So we really must look to the Bible and know that it's our responsibility to recognize the importance of emulating Christ and that we need to follow Jesus and his example and develop these Christ-like attitudes and actions. And it's up to us to influence people to become disciples of Christ in the years to come so that we can bring them more and more people to salvation and home to that eternal place with the Father. Oh, and I, I hope, I hope we decide to follow along with this journey as we discuss different topics each week and uncover the what, how, and the do about Jesus in this new weekly series. Next week, we're going to be talking about a tiny grape, one grape, one tiny grape. And a survey I did and the outcome of that survey. So in closing, Jesus calls the Holy Spirit a gift who will guide us 
lead us and empower us. Yet many believers don't experience this power in the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. They don't know the Spirit is real and these that eternal life is real and where you spend it is up to you and you have the choice. You have free will and you were given free will, but where will you spend it? It's the two places you can end up. You can end up with Jesus as your personal savior. And let me tell you, if you need prayer, please find in my description, my email, my web address and get a hold of me today and I will pray for you. So I hope you join us next week, folks. Don't forget to visit us on the web for any links that I may have mentioned and all of the show notes. It's www.youministries.com. And I want to pray for you. So get a hold of me. This is Tammy Becker. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to another weekly episode of the Almighty God and Gospel Girl podcast. If you have a testimony you would like to share with us, please contact us through our website at youministries.com. That's Y-O-U ministries.com. Until next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.